What's going on, arcade nerds? Um, if you may have seen one of my earlier videos, you may know that I have a little tiny FPGA. It's about the size of a credit card, and it plays Asteroids Deluxe, and, and it uses a real vector monitor. And so I'm thinking, okay, I have this tiny FPGA, and I'm thinking, I would love to have a tiny, tiny Asteroids Deluxe. So I cut these, this pieces of wood, me and my wife did, out of some quarter inch masonite. And here is some clips on how we did it. Okay, now, since that has been done, uh, let me show you what we're going to put inside. Uh, this is an old black and white television set. Okay, I paid like two bucks for it at like Goodwill about a year ago. And I figured one of these days I'm going to make a little mini vector monitor out of it. So, uh, so far I did plug it in and I do see static on the screen. So that's beautiful. So... Front. So I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna get I'm gonna get into all the stuff I'm going to do to this. We're going to make this into a mini vector monitor, but for now let me just uh, assemble this. You know, um, this I, okay. This is one quarter scale. So um, the top the top of this uh, cabinet to the bottom of the cabinet was 18 inches. Okay, and they really didn't have. Everything is going to be precisely a quarter inch, I mean quarter scale, except for the wood on the side. This wood is a quarter inch, and it should be, instead of 0.25 inches, it should be 0.18 uh, um, inches. But they really don't have a size so, like that. So it's going to be very, very close. This is about as close as you're going to be able to get. So, I also bought this stuff as like 75 cents. Uh, per stick. This is a quarter inch rod. That's going to be like the, the pieces of wood on the inside to mount all the, the whatever, mount all the pieces together. Um, yeah, so hopefully this may be a two-parter video or, or I may just take two days and put, you know, all, all the stuff together from two days. We'll find out in a minute. But, um, I'm, you know, I'm going to get into the electronics later. For now, let's just put this cabinet together. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is mount the inner pieces of wood like this okay and I know the bottom piece of wood is a quarter inch so I'm just going to use this as a spacer and then I'm going to drill a pilot hole on each side something like that And then I'm going to put these little tiny screws in. I'm also going to wood glue it. So let me just go ahead and put all these little pieces in and I'll catch up with you in a minute. Okay, as you can see, we put, actually my wife did this. You know, this, this is my wife's, this is kind of my wife's project. I want to do the guts. I want to make all the guts work. And Kelly is is having fun with the uh, cabinet. Um, now, so so far she has put all these pieces in. We, we, uh, she wood glued them, and uh, we screwed them, and drilled pilot holes, and whatever. So it's glued and screwed. And <laughs> Kelly Kelly measured the distance between here and here, and of course the distance from here to here, and and so on. And so we're getting there. Um, I think we're about at the point where. Uh, we're probably going to start putting the box together, and I'm not sure 
because you know we have uh, uh, more parts you know like this is uh, I don't remember what that is that I think that's the bottom one of these is the back door and something like that oh there's a top in there somewhere Kelly actually knows and, and, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, and I'm going to do the little things like I'm gonna sand the edges because uh, th this was cut with a jigsaw so you know it's they, some of the uh, cuts aren't perfectly straight but they will be they ended up being perfectly straight after sanding on the, on this but okay so let me try to I don't know I'm debating on you know let's say this is the bottom piece I'm debating on screwing it uh, gluing it and, screw, and screwing it again and then see see the tricky part is once I get the once I get like one piece on I can get the other side on and still put it I don't know we'll figure it out uh, you know what I'll, I'll show you guys whatever I come up with well I uh, put this in I put another piece of I put a screw here screw here screw here a couple screws here and it's, and it's, it's wood glued but it's already pretty solid the way it sits and uh, it looks like I was overthinking it because I could literally just uh, put this sucker right on. And it's pretty solid already, man. So I already drilled some pilot holes. I'm going to go ahead and wood glue this and screw this together. And one of these pieces, Kelly knows which one, one of these pieces goes in the bottom, one of these goes on the top. And, so on and uh yeah so let me go ahead and put put more together yeah right now i'm putting pretty much the last piece on and uh this is actually turning out nice this piece that i'm putting on right now is actually kind of a screw up piece which i'm gonna have to you know patch this one area up with bondo but not bad i mean i mean i literally went with no plans uh let me uh, actually let me tell you my plan. This is this is how I built this. this is how we how me and Kelly put this guy together, and it only took like two hours, Kelly. Yeah. Which is which is like fucking amazing. Um. What we did. Let me get a little more of this stuff on here. What we did is uh, there's a website, and I can't remember what it is, but there's a website that gives you like cabinet plans. Okay. And uh, they, they give you a picture of what the cabinet looks like, and we just like printed it out on a printer, and then like taped all the pieces of paper together, and uh, that's all we did. If this is just like a picture of the exploded cabinet, printed out on a piece of paper, and that's it. Now I'm actually out of screws, and this is the last piece. So I'm, I'm out of screws in the last piece. Whatever. I guess we'll let we'll let some wood glue hit. Now this right here is what I'm talking about. I miss I didn't measure the the well I didn't cut out the top piece correctly. So I'm just gonna fill this area in with bondo and do a little sanding and that ain't bad, man. That ain't bad. Look at this. Also, you see these bumps? This is where the screws came in. Now I already sanded a couple of these bumps down just as a test, and the screw does not come out. So this is just some some sanding I'm gonna do, but uh, man, Kelly, can you see that in the camera? Does that yeah? Does it good. look good in the camera? Man, that's not bad for two hours, right? That's pretty pretty awesome. Uh, the back door doesn't fit. <laughs> I don't know. I'll have to cut a new piece or sand this piece down. I don't even know if this measurement fits. Nope. See, that's all because of this incorrect top. If one piece is incorrect, it screws with everything else. So I'll have to cut a different back door and whatever. So let me let me work on the electronics. I'm gonna have to let this sit for a day to dry, but man, looking beautiful. This is gonna be so awesome. All right. Okay, this is the next day and I took the cabinet to work. Oh, and there's a little piece right here I didn't put on. You can see I did some Bondo work right here and right here. Um, now, this is not the best paint job. It's actually a terrible paint job. But, um, let, me let me tell you, what, what, you know, let me tell you why I'm okay with it. Um, 
uh, I put this inside a cardboard box and I had a heat gun and I, and I cut a hole in the cardboard box and I put a heat gun right here and it kind of blew hot air around inside a cardboard box and this kind it kind of like uh, it, it caused the uh, the wood to gas a little bit and it kind of made the texture kind of the, the, the paint kind of textured and I kind of like it I, I'm kind of I'm okay with it you know, it, it, it gives it like a weathered look. It gives it like an old look. So, I'm actually okay with it, you know. But, okay, so what I'm going to do now is work on the electronics. Okay, let me show you what I've done so far. Um, first off, if you open up a TV set and you see something that looks like this, this is what, uh, is, it's like an RF modulator slash tuner device, okay. What this usually does is it'll convert your signal into a video signal, which it, which can then be you processed by your video chip, and it, and that information is separated into uh, the guns and things like that, the in color intensities. And this is a, this happens to be a black and white tube, so it's just one one uh, one gun. But anyways, I removed this right off the bat. Why? Because this 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 piece right here is what creates that static picture on your screen with all the static as if as if you don't have a good good uh, station I don't want that crap on a vector monitor so this is completely removed and what I did is I uh, I found my uh, brightness up to potentiometer and I probed around a little bit with 5 volts and the circuit that, that is part of that brightness potentiometer I, I figured out which transistor that, I don't have schematics on this, I figured out which transistor it uh, controls. So I soldered one wire right here, okay, and that's going to be my Z amplifier. So let me, uh, let me hook power up to this thing real quick. By the way, this doesn't take, this, I mean, this takes a lot less power than I thought. Um, this is running off 12 volt at 1 amp. Pretty awesome. That's it. 12 volt at one amp. Okay, now I have five volt connected to, connected to that transistor. I'm going to disconnect five volt. You see how it got dim? You see how it got bright, dim, bright, dim? That is going to be my my Z drive. Okay. So when I have five volts here, that's basically going to mean presence of a signal to you know this is. Okay, a vector monitor uh, basically turns the, the the gun on and off at correct times, so you can actually draw the picture. And that's basically what I'm going to do. My 5 volts going to power that, okay, which is not bad. This is completely adjustable. Now we have another issue. Right now, this monitor is scanning raster. Okay, so it's it, it's scanning, and we need to, we need to disable all that. What I what I want to see is I want to see a spot in the center of this screen, zero deflection, but there's an issue. Okay, I don't know how. Once again, I don't have schematics on this on this TV. Okay, but uh, often um, your high voltage circuit could be part of a tank circuit that involves your yoke coil. So cutting the yoke coil out of the equation could kill high voltage. And if that's the case, I have two options. Number one, I could wind an inductor that basically does nothing and sits sits there and wastes power. Uh, three options three I could totally re redesign the high voltage circuit which I'm not going to do or four I could keep the yoke coil inside the cabinet somewhere and kind of screw it and mount it somewhere and have it look like crap so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these and, and see I'm gonna cut one line if I can get in there I don't want this to touch okay so now I have a line across the screen and I still have high voltage, which is beautiful. So I'm going to cut a second line. Ah, high voltage died. You see that? So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to probably, I'm going to try putting a resistor in the place of that one coil, or I'm going to um, wind an inductor just so it stays that way. I'll catch up with you. Well, running into some troubles, and I'll tell you why. Okay, I um, this wire right here goes directly to the gun. Okay, and uh, I put five volts to it, 
from the same power supply as this, and the tube got brighter. So, oh, okay, that's it. Well, really, I did. I didn't trace it to. I didn't know it went exactly to the gun. So I'm looking around, and there is. I don't know how this. I, I don't have schematics on this. It's just I don't understand how the hell this is working without a transistor to drive that gun. There's no transistor, a visible transistor at all, to drive the gun. Where's the transistors? See, this transistor is supposed to drive the uh, flyback, and there's like zero. That's the only transistor on this entire board. So it's, you know. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to stick with what I know, and we're going to make something ourselves from scratch. And this is what I'm going to do. Um, okay, do I have a good pen? Yep. Okay, this is what I'm going to do. See, our problem is we have Z coming in from the FPGA board. Let me zoom in some on this so you can see a little better. Okay, we have Z coming in. And at zero volts, there is no, no, no beam on the monitor. Okay, but at plus 5 volts-ish, there is a beam on the monitor, okay? So, uh, looks like, hold on, my SD card is filled. Let me, let me get an empty SD card. Okay, I'm back. Well, anyways, uh, let's say I have, I have no idea, I have no idea, let's say 12 or 20 volts on the gun, okay? And it's high all the time. Okay. Now, when the TV wants wants a beam, it'll hold that 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 uh, voltage down. Okay. And and when the gun line is grounded out, it will produce a picture. Okay. And depending how hard it's being grounded, it will depend on the brightness of the picture. So, um, I don't see. I I wanted to hijack the circuit on that to basically do the same thing, but instead. Um, I don't understand how it works, and rather than f try to figure it out without schematics, this is what I'm going to do, okay? Now, Z coming from the FPGA, we're going to put that in a transistor, and we're going to connect that to the gun, okay? And I'm going to drive a second transistor. In a Darlington circuit. And that's going to go to ground. Okay. So this is my ground, obviously. And this is my plus voltage, whatever the gun voltage is at, okay? Now, as long as my Z, my FPGA, is sharing the same ground, FPGA, it will, and I could use 2N2222, or uh, I know I have 3904s, and I know I have TIP 31s. Yeah, so that's what I'll do. Something like that. This will be my low voltage, and this, and, and then here's my ground, and then the, that'll uh, ground out the, the gun. Now, no worries about this being grounded out, because somewhere in, <coughs> somewhere in the original TV circuit, there's a resistor, and this is the, the voltage that you don't want to ground. This is designed to be grounded. Okay? Okay, so... Let me get my little perf board out. I'll build something, and I'll show you guys what I come up with. Okay, I jumped ahead ahead a little bit. Um, first off, I did not use the original TV board. I ended up using a TV, and the reason why is because um, the focus was was uh, was drifting off here and there. And instead of fixing it and figuring out what's wrong and wasting a whole bunch of time, 
I just went ahead and used a different board. This is this this was actually designed to run a uh, probably a what was it? I think a six inch screen. So I had to drop the voltage down to work with this size tube. Um, also, that schematic I wrote, it's right back here. This little piece right here. Can you see it? Let me try to zoom in. This little this little piece right here is what I did to control the Z. Because on this one, it was also a, a little funny to, to do it. And, and I already figured out a design for the Z amp circuit. Uh, also, this has some noise in the picture, and I know why. Um, the reason why, well, for example, here's here's my deflection wires uh, wrapping going right across the uh, the Z uh, wire and things like that. So I'm going to have to uh, shield the um, <coughs> the wires. And uh, let me see if I can get some sounds out of this thing. I'm just touching wires right now. Can you hear it? See, I'm using this little tiny FPGA right here. And right here is a little speaker. And that's going to go somewhere on the top of the cabinet. And uh, I'm using Fred Konoposka's um, deflection board right here. Oh, and, uh, and keep in mind, this is a total shit fest. This is a mess right now. Uh, I'm getting this. This is gonna be all cleaned up and nice and tidy. This is just just to make sure things working first. You know what I mean? Uh, also, if you notice this. Let's try to zoom into that. This is my power supply board that I made. Um, I I stepped on it, <laughs> and uh, uh, I was I was kind of kind of was kind of pissed. I stepped on it and I was like motherfucker. And uh, it ended up still working. <laughs> I was like, okay, it's busted in three pieces, and it's still working, so whatever. Um, yeah. So we're going to put it in this guy. And, you know, I'm probably going to cut the video off right here. And, uh, um, you know, you know what, the next video, we're going to... I'll have it all assembled and I'll show you everything working. I still need to get the brake press out. I have to bend a control panel and things like that. And I gotta figure out buttons. You, you know, I actually spent $14 on wood, okay? And money's kinda tight, money's kinda tight for me. So $14, believe it or not, was actually, you know, that was a lot of money for me at the time. I shouldn't have actually spent it. So in the future, I'm going to, you know, maybe someday uh, have artwork made or whatever, but I really can't spend any money um, Yeah, so all right uh, stay tuned for a part two and I will show you guys the Fully assembled thing all I'm really gonna do from here is uh, is a shield is, is get Shielded cables and figure out how to cram it in that box and that'll be it All right, um, don't forget to subscribe by the way